Hey, what's happening gamers? It's Kaylin here. Welcome back to another Retro Monday. In honor of Super Mario Brothers celebrating 25 years, man, I'm getting really old. Today's classic review is, well, Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo Entertainment System and Wii Virtual Console. This was the game that changed gaming forever and opened up the door for mascot characters and modern video games as we know it. Without the plumber from Brooklyn, gaming would have remained dead after the crash of the industry in 1983. Mario was created by Shigeru Miyamoto and first appeared in the arcade classic Donkey Kong by the name of Jumpman. Miyamoto wanted to create a game based on his character Mario with a plot and he wanted to also make the player feel for the hero as well as the story. Thus, Mario was reborn and took the Famicom by storm in 1985 in Super Mario Bros. A few months after the launch of the NES here in the States, Super Mario Bros. became the must-have game and was soon bundled with the system. Part of the appeal of Super Mario was its controls, though. The game relied on just two buttons and was really easy to play. The A button jumped and the B button ran faster or would shoot fireballs if you had a fire flower. For over two decades, this game remained the top-selling console video game of all time, with over 40 million copies sold worldwide. Sadly, it lost its number one spot by Wii Sports in 2009. Curse you, Wii Sports! Anyway, the gameplay was unlike any game anyone had played before. All the players had to do was move Mario to the right side of the screen and rescue the Princess Toadstool through eight zany stages collecting coins, jumping on enemies, finding secret pipes, and facing King Koopa in a battle royale. Still, it sounds a lot easier than it was. Each level was filled with lots of unique types of enemies, plus different obstacles, and the levels changed and so did the difficulty every world. Super Mario Brothers could be played solo, or a friend could tag along as Mario's brother Luigi, who's my personal favorite by the way. Still, this was a turn-based system only, so when the other player died, it would then be the other person's turn. Mario and Luigi could get four power-ups in this game. A mushroom that would make you grow larger, a fire flower to engulf your enemies in flames, a one-up mushroom to give you, well, a one-up, and a star to make the Mario Brothers invincible, well, for a little while anyway. At the end of every world, you have to face King Koopa himself. And the key to victory is actually to jump over him to remove the bridge so he falls in the lava. After that, players were crushed to learn that your princess is in another castle. As a kid, I used to get really mad at this game, like Hulk smash angry. The water level looked so sweet and innocent until you came face to face with these things. It was like death in the water. Later on in the game, players get introduced to the dreaded Hammer Brothers. Most of the gamers my age today can tell you horror story of these deadly creatures. You know, today I think these things would be considered mini or sub-bosses. They're pretty freaky. Although once you get the pattern down, it wasn't crazy difficult to defeat them. But sometimes they will catch you off guard and then yelling at your TV will come shortly afterwards. Near the end of the game, gamers must solve a maze to fight Bowser. While I think it was pretty clever how the developers did this, for many folks, this is where the game stopped for them. See, we didn't have the internet back then, so when you got stuck, it wasn't inconvenient for a few minutes or a few hours. We're talking days, weeks, holidays. Yeah, I know, uh, kindergarten cop line. My last minor issue with this game has to do with the jump mechanic. Now it's not broken or anything like that. Most of the time, it comes down to user error, not being able to get a running leap or just falling short of the ledge or sliding right off it. So yeah, that's all I had wrong with the original Super Mario Bros. Time to move on to the stuff that I really liked about this game. I have a lot of fond memories playing this with my dad, going over to people's houses, and playing this game just to replay it these last 25 years. Even after all these years, the game is just as fun today as it was then when I got it packaged with Duck Hunt. Part of what added to the fun factor was all the hidden goodies that Nintendo put in this game, like finding a hidden beamstalk to the cloud coins, finding invisible blocks for more coins or extra guys, and even skilled gamers could farm infinite one-ups. I can't forget to mention that the game does indeed have a checkpoint system. By holding in the A button and pressing start, players get to start the world you died at all over again, without needing to play through the entire game. 
That was awesome sauce! Frankly, the best and most known video game secret has to be the warp zone to this day. Just imagine, folks, discovering this trick to skip levels and move on to another world. That was unheard of for its day, folks. Gameplay is what made this game fun, but the music is what made it a legend. Even today, Koji Kondo's Mario theme is one of the best video game compositions and most recognizable worldwide. What amazed me about this tune, not only was it super catchy, but it's also a very complex jazz piece to play. And I know I'm a jazz percussionist. The music also acted as another character in this game as well. As the clock started to wind down to 99 seconds, the music would speed up. This would cause you to get all tense because if you didn't reach the end of the level, you lost a life. This gives new meaning to the term killer music. Actually, I'm not the biggest Mario fan in the world or fanboy or anything like that. The way I look at it, gamers, if Mario hadn't changed the dynamic of gaming today, we wouldn't be playing as our favorite game heroes. So, personally, I think we owe Mario some more gratitude than we usually give him and wish him another 25 years of success. Super Mario Bros. is definitely a game that still pones and only gets better with age. Of course I'm gonna recommend you guys play through this game, and the second harder quest after beating the game. Super Mario Bros. has been re-released and ported so many times throughout my life, so there really is an excuse for you younger gamers not to play this game. Some of you people only gaming the last 10 or even 5 years. I challenge you guys to get this game off the Wii's Virtual Console and play it with an open mind. Don't be a hack and diss on the graphics and just let the gameplay bring a smile to your face, like it did to my generation so many decades ago. Alrighty, that does it for another Retro Monday review. Keep checking back every Monday to see another classic game review in the old school K-Wing style. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with my retro shows, Gaming with K-Wing and K-Wife, and of course my next-gen games that I do for my freelance gigs. Well, God bless and happy gaming. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and until we meet again, gamers.